How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this animation right here. It's done in Eevee. It's fairly simple. If you want to get the project file you're seeing right here, you can get it in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that with all three tiers. If you don't know about the Patreon, it's full of exclusive tutorials. It's only the 12th and I've already released a breakdown video. I made a process video on how I created this character from the initial idea. So I showed how I came up with that idea and the process, what I did before I made the tutorial. And today I released a speed art video on how I did this render. I also released 10 procedural materials a month that's in collaboration with Syncratic. 3D. So we have the glitch pack, the iridescent pack, the wood pack, and this month I'll be releasing the metal pack. You can also get 50% off on my recent pack, which is 100 animation loop project files that you can dig into, put it in your client work, different things like that. You can go check that out. All of that is in the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. So we're going to open up Blender here and go ahead and make sure you are in the EV render engine. I'm going to hit shift a and go ahead and add in some text here. Now that we have our text, we'll click this little green a and we'll center everything right here, center out everything. And then I'm going to go ahead into the geometry section. I'm going to give this guy, um, however thickness you want, I'm going to hit tab and uh, type in uh, intro. I'm going to hit tab and type in intro in all caps. So just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my, whatever font I want by clicking this little object here. All right, now I have my text. Let's go back here to the geometry section and give it um, on the depth. I'm going to click it twice and bring my resolution down to zero. Now we have a really nice beveled edge right here, which looks really cool. Now I'm going to right click and click convert to mesh. And what that's going to do is get make this now mesh data. I'm going to hit X and click limited dissolve and that kind of cleans up our mesh uh, very quickly. All right, let's go ahead and start shading this. But first we need to set up these front faces. So hit tab to go into edit mode, click the little face selection tool here, and hold down shift and select all these front faces until all these front areas are selected. I'm going to hit I to inset and we're just going to move them in just a little bit more to give space because we're going to be adding that yellow sort of hazard looking material on that. Don't click away. Make sure it's still selected. I'm going to hit out of tab and then I'm going to go ahead and hit Z and go to material preview. I'm going to give it a first off the metallic material and then I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to hit plus icon, click new, go from principle to emission and then click assign and that's going to assign that emission material to our text here, which looks really nice. Let's go ahead, hop on on over to shading, and then we're going to go ahead and start shading this guy. So first, let's get that metal grunge material that we have. So we're going to go to slot one, and we're going to get a color ramp, color ramp right here, plug it into the roughness, and we're going to get a Musgrave, so M-U-S, Musgrave texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default, control T, and we'll be using the object coordinate for this. Plug a factor into the color ramp. We're going to put our dimension at zero, our detail all the way up. But um, you can see it is very grungy, but we still have really, really reflective parts. So on the black portion of your color ramp, bring it closer to a gray to sort of meet it there. So now nothing is super, super shiny, but still very grungy. Now let's go ahead here to slot uh, two and I'm going to hit period so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to get a color ramp. We're going to make that very hazardy looking. Um, material for this front portion. So plug the, emit that into the color. We're going to get in a wave, a wave texture here. I'm going to hit control T and then use that object coordinate, put the color in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I want this to be a hard edge. You can see it's very soft. So go from linear to a constant here in the color ramp and bring this up. And now we have it. And let's go ahead and get that yellow texture, I mean the yellow color. Now, these are already slanted by default for me, but if they're different, if they're not the way you want, just go here to the rotation of your color, I mean of your uh, texture coordinate, and uh, sorry, the mapping node, and you can move it around to however you like. And you can also play with the size of your stripes. I like them how they are at five. So this is what I'm working with, and then I can bring up the strength a little bit too. We're going to come back to this in a little bit, little bit to make them blink, but we need to actually separate all these guys in order to allow it to blink. The way you're going to do that is I'm just going to go here. I hit the tilde key to go to the top view, and I'm going to uh, click on this. This button right here gives it toggle x-ray. I mean, I'm going to hit tab for edit mode, and then I'm just going to go ahead and select this whole thing here. Go to F3 and type in separate, so SEP, and we're going to click mesh separate, and then go selection. And what that did was it 
uh, removed this whole selection. And now if I hit R, you can see it's rotating away from the whole thing. So what I want you to do is to go on each letter and select all of them and then F3 mesh separate selection. So do that for all of your letters. All right, I have separated all of my letters here. We're gonna go back to shading and now we're gonna activate a really cool string of nodes here to make them blink. So I'm gonna to go to Shift A and get a mix shader, plug that there. We're gonna duplicate the emission node and bring the strength all the way down to zero and plug the emission into the shader. I'm gonna bring the mix shader up here and we're gonna get a color ramp, C-O-L, get the color ramp here and plug the color into the factor so that we can crunch all the nodes that we're gonna be putting behind here. We're gonna get a noise texture and this noise texture is gonna allow the next node we add to sort of translate a very glitchy strobiness. So that's gonna be the object info. So object info, this node, it recognizes that this whole material is applied to multiple different objects. So when we plug in the randomness output and bring the white portion in, you can see how they um, act differently. So if we bring up the scale here on the noise, you can see how they act, but how do you animate it? We're gonna go from 3D to 4D. And then if you play with the uh, W here, you can see they mix around. Now, if you like how they kind of dim out and dim in, that's actually a really nice look. But for me personally, I like them to totally turn off. So I'm going to go from linear to constant and then go back and you can see they blink a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to go about that and then use the W. So I like this animation. I'm not going to animate it quite yet. We're going to do some other things first. So go back to layout. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, plane here. And then I moved my uh, 3D cursor, but that's fine. Um, we're gonna bring it right over here. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna go hit the tilde key to go to the top. And then uh, I'm gonna go get my camera now actually. So camera, control alt zero, snaps that to view. And I'm gonna hit G and middle click to move it out just a little bit. And now we can go ahead and start scaling up everything to fit the scene. Control A, apply the scale once you move your plane. All right, how do we get the gear? How do we make the gear that's in my scene? We're gonna go up here to edit preferences and go to the add-ons here and type in extra. We're going to right here, mesh extra objects. Now select it. We're going to go to shift A, mesh, and right here you'll see gears and we'll select gear. Now in this drop down, there's a bunch of different ways you can uh, change your gear, do whatever you want, make it really unique. I'm just going to use the default for now. And then I'm going to select this little selection tool. I mean the scale tool and just bring them down. And then I'm going to bring it right under our text like that. And then I'll scale him up to be something like this to fit the camera. I'm gonna hit G to kind of move my camera around. And I like this composition already. It already looks super cool. Let's go ahead and animate the text dropping in, but we don't want to animate each individual letter by themselves. That's a lot of work. So here's what we're going to do. Shift a, and we're going to add in an empty. So let's go ahead and add the empty here in the middle of our text. So right here, I think right about here is the exact middle. We'll go here. First off, you need to select every letter. So O, R, T, N, I, and then select the empty last, control P, and parent that to object. What that does, if you've never parented before, is it makes all the objects move with this one object, which is what we want. So. What I'm gonna do is get in my uh, object properties and I think it's the Z, I'm gonna bring it up. So just bring the text past the camera and then we're gonna animate this. But we need to make sure our, our keyframe interpolation is correct. So go to edit, preferences, and then in the uh, animation portion, make sure default interpolation is on Bezier. That's gonna allow a very smooth motion when he hits the ground. He won't just hit the ground really fast, he'll slowly hit the ground. So you'll see that in a second. So I'm gonna hit this little keyframe here, and then I'm gonna say, wait, I'm gonna go eight seconds or so. So right over here, I'm gonna give it about that long. And then now we can bring our text down to however small we want. So we'll bring it all the way down to here. And then that's good. And we'll hit this to finalize the keyframe. So now you can see He stops. Now I want to rotate him. I want him to be doing something interesting. So we're going to take the Y and the Z rotation. So first off, the 
I'm gonna make it um, after the text kind of hits the ground, I wanna kind of look at it for a second. So right about to 190. So right here on end, give it 190, 190 frames total on this animation. So first I wanna make this guy rotate. So I'm gonna select this and this to keyframe them. Go right here and on both of them type in 360. That'll give them a full 360 rotation. So when they hit the ground, they'll be facing right back up, right where it began. So now if I hit zero, you can see the text comes in, does that fun rotation and stops. And that's how you get that really nice animation. And then it'll stop there. All right, let's go ahead and start shading and animating this text area here. So we'll go back to shading and then I'm gonna click on that. Make sure you're in slot two. We're gonna go ahead and animate our uh, text. So let's bring up a new window right here. Get the uh, timeline, go to the end and let's animate the W. So right click here on the noise texture of slot of the slot two material, insert keyframe, click on the noise texture so you can see that there is a keyframe and then go to the end of your animation and we'll just give it We'll slide that over till I like the speed. So right about there, insert keyframe. And then now if I go back to layout and I go to render, you can see kind of preview, it is blinking at a nice pace and that's what I want. All right, let's go back to shading and apply this grunge material here on slot one. We're gonna get that and let's apply that to the plane. So we get hit the drop down material one. That looks really nice. And then we'll apply this material here as well. And now let's start actually shading this whole thing. First thing I wanna do is click on the gear and I'm gonna click this button right here that kind of makes it, that kind of duplicates that material. So now it's a standalone material and I'm going to make it um, quite a bit darker. And then actually I wanna put that same material on the ground plane so that the text is brighter and brings your um, point of focus to the text, which is what I want. Just to make sure I did that correctly, I'm gonna check out my, my uh, original animation here, just to be sure. All right, we might tweak that later, but for now it looks really good. Let's go ahead and start lighting this scene here with area lights. So I'm gonna go ahead, shift A and add in an area light. So uh, lights, can't find it today. <laughs> uh, we'll bring it over here and then we'll bring it down I'm gonna hit R and rotate him so he's looking this direction. And then I'm gonna duplicate it, bring it over here. I'm gonna hit R again to uh, make sure that he is looking this direction. And then I'm gonna sort of make sure that's final. And then select these two and then bring them over so that they are pointing here. Now let's start um, actually picking the colors and picking the strength. So now we have these, I'm gonna bring this guy a little bit closer. And then on this guy, we'll make him a nice fiery red and bring up that scale. I mean the brightness here. And then we'll take this guy and make it a nice, nice deep blue and also bring up that brightness. So we're doing that. Let's go ahead and bring up how big these lights are. I wanna scale them up a little bit. I'm gonna bring them up like this. So now we have this going on. I think this guy might be a little bit too bright for me, including this guy. He's uh, kind of overtaking the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and make this plane here. I'm gonna go back to shading, go to rendered view, and I'm gonna hit that little duplicate, I duplicate icon and I'm gonna make this portion a good amount darker than the gear. And then, so now you can see bring just for composition to bring your eye where we want it to go. This is darker than this one, and then this one is darker than this one in terms of that metallic material, just to bring your eyes to where we want them to go. One thing I wanna quickly do to this gear is bevel him so that the light hits him, just like the way the light is hitting the bevel on our letter. So we'll go ahead, click on the gear, and add in a bevel, a bevel modifier. We'll click on angle, and then bring our offset to something like this. And now we have a nice bevel on our gear. Now you can see the light hits it really nicely. That's what we're looking for. Let's go back to the area light and bring up their strengths um, a good bit. Bring it back to where they kind of were. All right, now let's go check out how the animation is looking so far. So we'll bring that in. 
bring it like that. He's playing with the lights, comes in, rests, and that's our animation. Last thing I want to do is rotate my gear here. So we'll rotate him. Well, I believe it's the Z. Yep. I'm going to hit the keyframe here, go to the end, and just rotate him however I, much I want him to rotate. We'll do that. And then now, press play. We can see the gears rotating. We have a nice intro. And that is how we're making this. Now, let's go ahead and get some compositing really quick. So I'm just going to stop it right about there. Something like that. I'm going to hit render, render image. So now we have that. I'm going to go here to compositing. Click use nodes. I'm going to hit shift A and type in viewer. Get a viewer node so we can see what's going on behind us. Let's go ahead and get a glare node, GL. Glare node here. Plug that there. And then we're going to bring our uh, streaks down to two and bring our color module up. Something like that so we get these really cool flares. I'm going to duplicate this glare node, plug it there, and go from streaks to ghosts. And that's going to give us these things, but they're too too much too in your face. So we're going to bring the mix down to, say, 0 0.6. Uh, maybe something like that. So that looks really cool. And to make sure that when you render it, those um, those flares and optical things render out, put this last glare node into the composite. So when we go to rendering, you can see it happening right there. So that's it. That's final. We're done with the animation just to make sure it is going correctly. He goes in, comes in, and then drops just like that. And that's our intro. So now let's just go ahead and show you my export settings so we can finish up. We're going to go to the printer icon, select where you want to save it, go from PNG to FFmpeg video. We'll go to encoding, put it MP4, medium to perceptually lossless, and you're done. And then when you finish, you will have a render that looks similar to this one. It looks really cool, looks really fun. Again, you can get this project file here on Patreon, check on all that stuff. It's linked in the description, and thank you for watching.